What's up guys and welcome back to part five of the four banger swap 1993 hatchback white on blue original paint real clean car needs a buff but real solid foundation so if you guys have been following along on this now five part series of the v8 five liter swap into a four cylinder hopefully you guys have been enjoying it so far chances are you are or you probably wouldn't be tuned back in. If this is your first time watching the channel, be sure to check out some of the other videos before because, well, you're gonna be missing out on all the nitty gritty stuff that takes place in order to properly convert a four cylinder Fox body into a 5.0 V8 car. So you can see behind me, I've got the motor on the cherry picker here. It's pretty much all buttoned up. Alternator's already in the car because that's hardwired in. If you guys are wondering why, again, check out the previous videos. Fuel rails and fuel line ready to go. AC compressor is on, bell housings on, clutch, clutch fork, starters bolted on, all that good stuff. Got our transmission laying on the floor here with the cross member, cold air piping, and a couple other miscellaneous hardware things. But the car is pretty much ready now to receive this. We are pushing about 4.30 p.m. on a Wednesday and I was determined to get the swap done in three to four days, which in essence it has been, but we need to finish up the nitty gritty stuff, i.e. put the motor in and hook up the connectors and put some fuel to it and hit that key. And hopefully everything is gonna be good to roll. So here's the car, here's the engine bay, everything is ready to go. So let's get this motor installed. on the situation here one of the best investments i ever got was that under hood light uh, you can see a bunch of tools laying down on the ground here because i just finished the 5.0 suspension and brake swap making sure that everything is proper on the swap this isn't a half-ass swap guys this isn't you know keeping the four cylinder fuel lines and four cylinder brakes and power steering lines and all that other stuff i have literally swapped everything that would have come on a 5.0 car into this car short of the steering wheel. The steering wheel is a four cylinder one. It's not leather wrapped, but cluster, everything, all little stuff that is different. You don't need to do all that stuff, but again, I wanted to do something thorough and in detail. This isn't a nut and bolt restoration or crazy build. This is a functional, gonna be a driver car for the gentleman's first car, in fact and that was supposed to be his first car, but now he's going for this one because that one was wrecked and just not worth investing the time or money in. So with that little bit of a recap, which I'm sure most of you guys have been following along already knew that, uh, I'm gonna wheel that motor out and drop it in the car here. And um, well, we'll see how the daylight situation goes. I don't think I feel like wrestling the transmission up under there after once the motor's in, but we'll see. Maybe I'll be ambitious today. Anyways, time to put the GoPro down. Let's get this in. All right, guys, there we go. The motor is in. That wasn't too bad. Went in pretty much with ease as we like that to happen and not run into crazy hiccups or anything like that. So. Reality is, I should probably just jack up the car, wrestle that transmission in there, and that way it's in, and um, and then I don't have to worry about it. What do you guys think? Probably uh, the best course of action. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go for it. <sighs> Just lost the f***ing throttle. Nice. Oh my god. 
that is so f***ing strong. guys transmission is in you gonna have to tighten up these uh transmission mounts we're gonna do the trimming tomorrow and the transmission tunnel so you guys can see what that's all about and hook up our starter hopefully get our drive shaft installed actually got to hook up the uh, emergency brake cables which um man those are never fun to deal with but anyways uh we're almost there and um the thing about this car is I want to try and get as much of it all together because it's a fresh motor. And once it's running, I um, need to do the uh, break-in cycle. So some varying RPMs for about 20 minutes. And I just want to make sure that everything is good and things aren't going to like rattle loose or, I don't know, fall out. Who knows? So I just want to try and get all of the nitty-gritty stuff out of the way so that, that way when this thing fires up, it's pretty much ready to roll. It's finally stopped raining. It is Thanksgiving Day here, so I hope that by the time anybody is watching this that you guys have had a fabulous Thanksgiving holiday and over ate yourselves with turkey and drank way too much. I don't know what you drank during Thanksgiving. I'm already on the eggnog. I don't know about you guys, but um, the rain has stopped. It's supposed to rain all day today. I see a little bit of blue sky in the distance. I know tomorrow for a fact it says it's just going to rain, 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 rain. And um, I don't want to lose or miss out on this opportunity to get some stuff done. So other than this huge puddle of water here, it's pretty much right where I need to stand. All right, you figure, you know what? I might as well as uh, start getting some stuff together here in the engine bay. I've already started plugging in some of the clips uh, i'm gonna get the ground straps connected at the back of the block both the grounding strap off the firewall and then the one for the injector harness those are both critical components to have hooked up and maybe i'll get the radiator jammed in with the uh with the pipes and if the rain actually has stopped for a little bit and some of this can dry up that would be amazing so that way maybe just maybe I'll wedge myself under there and start bolting up the H pipe and uh, just trying to get that out of the way. Because if I can get that on the front, that pretty much means I can put the front of the car back down. And then I just got to worry about the cat back and the last few things, putting the rear springs in the car and then be done. So just going to uh, put away at some stuff here. It's a little breezy, but like I said, um, it's an opportunity. And I'm not going to work too long today because, well, I got turkey dinner coming. Take manifolds on. We got most of our vacuum lines done. The throttle cables hooked up. Our plug wires are on. Coil cover, main ground wire, the engine ground, um, fuel injector harness ground. The radiators in. Fan shrouds in. So we are getting there. All right, guys. Let's talk about the transmission tunnel opening here. So there's a lot of controversy about, you know, how much do you cut? Do you even need to cut? so on and so forth so i purposely didn't cut anything and i jack the transmission up where you can see actually 
the bolts kind of push the metal up some here. So the reality is we do need to section a little bit out of here. I've already kind of marked stuff out and made two little uh, cuts with my hacksaw and nothing needs to happen at the bottom. And in fact, you can use the bottom as a template on the shifter boot housing. So if these two are in here, then you're gonna be able to see where those two holes need to be created so that you can get the proper hardware and bolt these down. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna trim the rest of this out and then I'm gonna sand. Got, you know, some protective stuff in here to make sure I don't get any debris down in the transmission area. So I'm gonna go ahead, chop the rest of this out. And um, again, it would have been easier without the transmission there, but I wanted to show you guys firsthand factory T5 that you do need to trim, especially if you want access to be able to put your shifter or swap your shifter or whatever it is that you might need to do. So this one, I know I'm gonna be able to get the clip on no problem. This one over here, I think I'm gonna have to take a little bit more metal out. Guys, so now we can do a test fit. So there you have it. Now like I said, ultimately you want to cut that out when the transmission isn't in the car. So use this as your template, as your guide plate. I just wanted to show you guys firsthand because there's always that, oh, I didn't need to trim anything or do anything. And I feel like a lot of people don't try and install factory hardware, these clips for these little 516 bolts. I feel like I've seen it a lot of times. This rubber's ripped out. People get really creative with what they do down here. Sometimes I see self-tapping screws that end up installed instead of this proper hardware. So there you have it. Everything fits nice with the automatic transmission tunnel. Of course, this has nothing to do with four cylinder versus five liter. This is strictly automatic versus five speed. If you had a 5.0 automatic and you were doing a five speed swap, you'd be doing the same thing right here. So all is good i'm actually going to leave this on here to keep things protected because i got to go for turkey dinner and um, next step is actually going to be throwing about 2.5 quarts of atf right in this uh, shifter hole assembly and then we'll put some uh, pervitex around the shifter i forget what kind it is we'll bolt the shifter on and that'll be pretty much it for the transmission uh, our hour tally, if we got two hours in today, I believe we left off at 27 hours, puts us at 29 hours, give or take. So really just some last button up items, rear springs, drive shaft, exhaust, um, plug the cluster in, won't fully bolt that in just to make sure we want to make sure that it's working, all the gauges work, all that other stuff, fill the transmission. So um let's see let's see if we knock this out in four days all right guys we'll see you soon oh another breezy dismal day this whole swap has been cloudy has been rainy but tomorrow they say for real this time it's gonna get nicer anyways i'm taking advantage of some dry pavement right now got the starter wires hooked up i got the first section of the exhaust bolted on because actually it's in multiple sections, which I like. Those V-bands, some people knock them, but man, can they be convenient. So I got those loosely bolted up on the collectors of the headers, and I got the e-brake cables uh, swapped, sorta. So I think 92, 
93 for sure, but maybe 92. The design of the emergency brake cables is different. I'm gonna show you right now, and I wanted to get those in before I go ahead and install the drive shaft. So let's get back under the car here. All right, so looking at this section right here, and as I mentioned before, I think 92 and 93, or maybe it's just 93. This piece isn't like this on earlier cars. And there's a little rotating slider that's normally here as well. So what I've done is I've just actually reinstalled the e-brake cables that were on this car because they are the same, they're the right length, they're the right design, and they will work on our 8.8 .8 setup. So now technically it looks like there's two sets of emergency brake cables per rear wheel, which is fine, because once we get the back jacked up, then I'll pull, pop the drum off and then I'll swap out the original one for the four cylinder ones. Of course, I'll get them mounted back up near the torque box floor pan area there. And now, time to get this drive shaft installed. Now it's time to pour some fluid into the transmission here. So there's a lot of controversy online about gear oil and versus ATF and well you can see judging by this color this is ATF guys we're gonna do about two and a half quarts and filling it up through the shifter is definitely a nice little cheat if you guys have access to <laughs> having your shifter off it's much easier than trying to go through the fill screw on the side of the transmission so i'm just going to go ahead here get this poured up and then going to get the shifter reinstalled so just going to end up cleaning the surface up here and putting a little bit of permatex on we'll get everything bolted in place and we're going to be good to roll here All right guys, small moment of truth here, just to uh, show I accidentally did this without even realizing the key was forward on the ignition. And um, I was just gonna touch this to see if we had power now that the computer and everything is hooked up. And if we just tap that, look at all that fuel. So we know our fuel pump relay is working, which is awesome. Well, we know the fuel pump is working, computer is working, seems to be doing everything it should be doing. So the weather is getting ready to turn. So that's it for today. Maybe uh, two hours uh, messing around with stuff. Got the power steering pump installed, the accessory drive belt on, the water pump pulley tightened down. Most importantly, uh, we got the drive shaft installed. We got the first part of the exhaust off the collectors installed. We got the transmission cross member tightened down. We got the transmission filled with fluid. We got the shifter installed. The dust boot is installed. Uh, final wiring for the computer and the passenger side kick panels back on. So just stupid little odds and ends. It takes some time and, you know, going through, ticking off things off the list. So I'm going to go ahead now, tighten up the motor mounts real quick. And that's going to be it because it's already starting to mist. I'll be underneath the car to get that done and be back out here tomorrow to hopefully wrap up the last few things and be able to fire the car up. Um, oh yeah, and we got those emergency brake cables cut over, well, at least in the transmission tunnel side of things. Uh, once we get the back end of the car jacked up to do the exhaust, then we'll be able to pull off the rear wheels. We'll get our rear springs installed and uh, pull the drums off and we'll get those e-brake cables installed on there. So till tomorrow.
right guys, the sun's shining today. I've got the rear end of the car jacked up here and it's time to finish up the e-brake cables and hopefully get this exhaust rated up here and then we are going to be ready to fire this car up. Here's some miscellaneous parts that I just took off. I'm going to swap out the uh, pinion snubber for the correct 501 and then we got some miscellaneous exhaust hanger brackets here. I'm not 100% sure if the passenger one or the driver side one uh, needs to be swapped uh, versus the passenger side, but we've got to remember the four cylinder only had exhaust on one side, so we definitely need the bracket that goes up on the upper frame rail in the back here, which is this guy. But I got more than enough stuff than I need here, so we're going to get that all mounted up and taken care of. All right guys, passenger side is pretty much done with the exception of the exhaust. So I'm gonna go over to the driver's side now. We have a great cable swapped over and we can finally route the exhaust and fire this thing up. Man, is it windy out there. I'm going to try and hold the camera in here. Maybe it'll cut the wind down a little bit. But that's it, guys. Got the rear end all sorted out. Got all the control arms bolted up nice and tight because it was just kind of the bolts passed through there before. We got our springs in. We got our shocks bolted in. And funny enough, I was actually going to use those other shocks that looked new. Well, looked newer, but they were actually blown. And the ones that were on this diff, they were actually working. So I just ended up bolting them on, got the exhaust bolted up, and these are GT tips. So don't judge me guys, obviously the exhaust came off a of GT. They're sitting all crooked and sideways because I will deal with the exhaust when I can get the car on the lift. I just wanted to get the exhaust on. So when I start it up and I initially run it, it's not sounding like a race car. So we got the keys, got the cold air intake bolted on, Radiator is topped up. I've double checked all the fluids. The only thing that I do not have hooked up is the EGR. So I've capped off the one line at the back of the intake. This guy has nothing going or to him or off him, and the EGR has got a cap on it. So, moment of truth. Man, I cannot believe that wind, guys. It is just unreal today. So now's the moment of truth to see if this thing's going to fire up. Remember, this is a freshly built motor, so uh, we have our top dead center found. Distributors in pretty much a good relative place for an initial startup. It's not like we're trying to run 14 degrees of timing or anything like that. And all of our electronics work. Check that out. Um, if you guys want to do another test, what you could do is you could turn the ignition forward, check your TPS voltage, make sure that you have a reading there that makes sense and everything else. And um, I've actually gone ahead and done that. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with checking your TPS voltage. Um, that's really important just to make sure that your computer is reading the right voltage and things aren't just triggered and sitting at five volts. Uh, what else? Double checked our fluids, our firing order, double check that. And that's pretty much it. Let's see if this thing will fire up. Oh, and remember, this is a, uh, a different cluster. I don't have the plastic on just because I wanted to make sure that all of the gauges work. Make sure we're in neutral here. Are you kidding me? What I've sort of done is just run a jumper cable from the negative terminal to the AC bracket. Should be a good ground. All right, guys, I think the starter was just kind of stuck. guys i double checked top dead center i'm there so we should be okay um 
I did swap out the cluster again for another one that I had laying around. I didn't even realize that this was a 90 through 93. That other one, the oil pressure gauge actually was not working. You can see it's like living way down at the bottom there and it wasn't moving at all. This one at least uh, moves when I turn the key forward. So let's start this thing up and see what happens. I got the timing light hooked up out there too. So we'll check the timing once we got it idling. And our old pressure gauge is working. There we go, we got our idle going. Check stuff. Okay, we'll get our uh, rad cap on tight. We have successfully swapped that four cylinder Mustang to a five liter V8 car. So there will be some videos coming up in the future. We'll deal with all the little wrap up items, clean up the interior. So it's gonna end part five of this video. You saw it. It starts, it runs. Uh, does it stop yet? We don't know. We don't know if it drives because two key things left. We need to hook up the clutch cable and we need to bleed the brakes, both of which are helpful when you have somebody else to help you with those things. So there will be a follow-up video on just the wrap up items, getting the interior back together, shaking it down, all those things. But that is going to end the four cylinder, four banger V8 5.0 conversion slash swap, whatever you want to call it. I hope you enjoyed this series. If you did, make sure you subscribe and like if you haven't already. If it has benefited you in some way, shape or form, or you just want to help out with my beer fund, hit that thanks button down there. It's always appreciated. So until next time, we'll see you here on the Infamous Project. Oh,